Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Andrew Robbins, and I'm an attorney here at Step and Sullivan PC. I'd like to start by welcoming everybody who is joining us on this today's webinar. This is the first webinar in a multi-series webinar that we are doing discussing the divorce process in Texas. Today's webinar concerns the initial uh, divorce filing, the initial steps that one needs to take, and we will cover first the steps in the filing for divorce, the documents and information that we need from our clients when filing a divorce petition, what to expect when you first meet with your attorney, and a summary of the initial filings. Now for today's webinar, we have Jad Stepp and Dennis Sullivan, uh, two attorneys here at Stepp and Sullivan. Uh, Jad, could you please kind of introduce yourself to everybody? Thank you, Andrew. It's uh, Jad Stepp, and thanks every, uh, to everyone for joining the webinar. We appreciate your attendance today. Uh, I'm a trial lawyer in Houston, Texas. I've been trying lawsuits uh, roughly for the last 38 years. Uh, we're very familiar with the trial court, very familiar with uh, being in court and uh, zealously uh, advocating for our clients. That's what uh, I've done for a living, and it's uh, what we do now. I'm also a certified mediator, a general mediator in the state of Texas, and also an advanced certified mediator in family, child custody, and divorce matters. Thank you, Jad. Uh, our second panelist is Mr. Dennis Sullivan. Dennis has been practicing in Texas for over 29 years. Dennis, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Welcome to the webinar. And uh, we're, we're really looking forward to imparting some of, of the knowledge that we've gained uh, in our experience uh, with you today uh, so that it can help you along your, your road uh, should you decide uh, that you need a divorce. Uh, I've, as Andrew said, I've practiced for about 29 years here in Houston. Um, I am a trial lawyer, um, and I try uh, all types of cases, uh, namely uh, family law cases. Um, uh, I do uh, family uh, law, I do divorce, child custody, um, as well as uh, some personal injury work as well. Um, but everybody here at Step and Sullivan is very, uh, very well versed in the trial courts and very well versed in the family courts, uh, which will uh, will assist you in in your divorce action. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Jad. Uh, at the outset, before we get into really the the family law uh, family law issue that we want to discuss today, I want to touch briefly on the COVID nineteen pandemic. Are the family courts open in Harris County? And how is Step and Sullivan maintaining its ability to service its clients during this time? Yes, the family courts are open uh, during the COVID-19 epidemic. Uh, they've been open consistently since the epidemic started. Uh, we have been uh, in and out of those courts uh, almost every day uh, since the uh, COVID-19 pandemic started. Uh, much of the work now is done via Zoom, uh, and that is uh, no problem at all. It's just like this seminar. We attend uh, hearings with the court. You can even do trials uh, by Zoom. So uh, the fact that uh, COVID-19 is here is a shame, and it certainly is a horrible thing for uh, our country. But as far as being able to uh, file for divorce, get temporary and permanent orders, uh, get a divorce granted, it hasn't affected uh, the courts whatsoever. And, and uh, along with that, Andrew, um, you know, our office, uh, we office uh, right on Memorial Drive uh, in between Memorial Park and downtown Houston. Uh, we're in an office building and uh, the office building is sanitized, cleaned, and um, they, there's also inspections um, that the building does to ensure that everything is clean and sanitized. The building itself requires uh, social distancing. It requires masks to be worn. And we follow all of those guidelines. In our offices specifically, uh, they are cleaned daily. Uh, they are sanitized daily. Uh, we do... Uh, uh, follow the guidelines for social distancing. Uh, we also wear masks 
when uh, we're meeting with people. And of course we do have hand sanitizers and, and cleaning supplies um, for, for the use uh, whenever it's needed. Now for today, today's webinar, we are concentrating on those initial steps when filing for divorce. And so the first issue I wanted to touch upon was the, the timeline for divorce. What's the typical timeline for divorce in Texas? Is, is, and is there a better time to file a divorce during the year? It, it looks like uh, Jad might be having a little bit of uh, uh, technical difficulties there uh, well, with his microphone. Oh, it looks like he just came back on. So I'll give it back to you, Jad. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, Andrew, you asked, uh, is this a good time to file for a divorce? And it certainly is. I apologize for my uh, volume being off, but it's a, a very good time to file for a divorce. Uh, with the holidays coming up, uh, uh, later in the year. Uh, this is a, a time where uh, if you can work uh, things out, if you can work different issues out, uh, you can get your divorce uh, prior to the time of the holidays. Uh, statutorily in Texas, it's uh, 60 days and one additional day before divorce can uh, become final. So from the time you file your petition at the courthouse, uh, until the time that your uh, divorce is granted can be as short as 61 days. Uh, to some of you, that may sound uh, like a very uh, long time. To others of you, it may sound like a brief time. But what makes a difference is that uh, you have to be able to uh, have your paperwork in order. You, and, and by the paperwork, I mean the sort of uh, forms and, and information we'll talk about today. You also have to be able to uh, make some agreements with your spouse uh, so that uh, the uh, uh, issues of uh, custody, the issues of residence, the issues of uh, uh, money and how money will uh, uh, be exchanged and take place and the like uh, can be worked out after the divorce is filed. Now I say that it takes 60 days to get a divorce. There are several exceptions. Uh, the first is if there's spousal abuse. If you are uh, a abused spouse uh, and there are certain criteria for that, uh, which will be discussed in one of our other seminars. But if you're an abused spouse, uh, sometimes the courts will grant a divorce in less than 60 days in order to alleviate uh, that problem and get you away from your spouse. Also an annulment, uh, judge can um, uh, annul a marriage uh, anytime within 60 days. But generally a, a divorce can be accomplished in 60 days. I can tell you that at Step and Sullivan, we work very hard uh, to uh, narrow those time limits the best we can. It doesn't really depend on us because we're ready to work uh, 24 7, 365. It depends on your ability to uh, get organized, get your paperwork to us so we can do things properly and uh, we can uh, advise you on the issues that are available and uh, go forward uh, to be able to work out those issues uh, so that you can have your divorce done correctly and promptly. And Andrew, I, I, I do want to mention that uh, from a timeliness of the divorce, um, right now, uh, we are uh, about four months uh, until the end of the year, and that means uh, pretty soon uh, we'll be coming up on uh, Halloween, uh, coming up on Thanksgiving, and then at the end of the year, of course, um, the, the end of year holidays, New Year's, Christmas, um, special family holidays. So. Uh, by filing today, or by filing at this time of the year, um, you have a good chance of, number one, either 
reaching a divorce by the end of this year, or if you're not able to reach a divorce because there are issues that you and your spouse uh, simply cannot agree on at this time, you, you can institute something called temporary orders, which will allow you and your spouse to uh, set rules and guidelines as to how you act and how your spouse acts and set guidelines for children and visitation and custody and things like that. By filing now, when you still have four months to the end of the year, you set yourself up to have these holidays handled with a set of rules that guides you and your spouse as to how you handle the household, your finances, your children. It's, it's a good time uh, to uh, get your life uh, started in the new direction uh, that, that you need uh, to do so. And uh, by filing the divorce now, you give yourself that, that extra time so you can have the, holiday, the, the holidays without the stress of the unknown, the stress of what your spouse will do, uh, things like that. So uh, from a timeliness standpoint, um, it, it is timely to uh, uh, seek a divorce now in anticipation of the upcoming holidays at the end of the year. And I know you mentioned TRO, which are temporary restraining orders. And, and at Stephen Sullivan YouTube page, I know you, there's an entire video kind of going over the steps and process and information of a TRO here in Texas. But could you kind of give a briefly kind of a rundown of the information and guidelines that the typical TRO in Texas has? Um, my apologies again. Uh, my microphone was muted. Uh, as far as TROs are concerned, uh, in Texas, uh, if you make allegations uh, that a restraining order is needed, good faith allegations as against your spouse, either for violence, uh, for uh, uh, your safety, for your children's safety, uh, or for uh, uh, a financial situation where they may be um, uh, draining the bank account or doing other things like that, uh, you, the, the, you get an automatic uh, uh, restraining order for 14 days. That is, status quo must be kept for that 14 days. During that 14 days, um, uh, there is no uh, there is no activity that can take place that will will change your status, and that's served on your spouse, and they know that during that period of time, um, they'll have to get a lawyer themselves, and during that period of time, we will start trying to work out uh, some permanent orders, uh, which uh, not only keep the status quo, but also keep you protected both uh, physically and financially and your children uh, protected both physically and fin uh, financially uh, during the uh, period, uh, first periods of the divorce. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's right, Jack. Um, if, if you have uh, a situation where uh, a, a temporary restraining order may not be called for, um, you're, you're still not lost. Uh, as, as a spouse, you still have the ability to have the court help you. And the court can help you uh, with something that's referred to as temporary orders. And temporary orders can address a wide variety of different things. However, they're most often uh, used in order, to con in, in order to control the relationship between the spouses. So, uh, for example, a temporary order can... Uh, prevent uh, spouses from calling each other at all times of the day. They can be used to stop harassing calls, stop harassing visits, things like that. Temporary orders can freeze bank accounts or limit the types of purchases that can be made. It can 
uh, prevent spouses from draining accounts, can prevent spouses from canceling all credit cards. It can address who lives in the house or who has access to the house or even who has access to items in the house. So temporary orders are a very important part of a divorce action. Um, they are uh, something that will guide you and your spouse as the divorce uh, progressing uh, towards its final, its final step, which is a, a divorce judgment, divorce decree. But rest assured that temporary orders uh, can be entered into and they can be used to protect you, your assets, and, uh, and your children. That's right, Dennis. Uh, just to tell you how this looks, uh, you file your petition for divorce. At that point, uh, the status quo is kept. Uh, a lawyer for your spouse comes in and answers the lawsuit. They usually call us fairly quickly. At that point, what we generally do is start talking about what's needed for temporary orders in order to keep our client in, in good shape and to keep our client in um, uh, a very harmonious and in and, and the way that they customarily live for that period of time necessary to work out final uh, orders and, and to get the divorce. Uh, if that doesn't uh, go as we would hope it would with the other lawyer and we can negotiate those, then we go to mediation. We go to a certified mediator who uh, knows exactly what we're there for uh, in their office. Uh, we're in their office. Uh, no one's together. You're not in the same room. You're in different rooms and the mediator goes back and forth to negotiate um, custody to negotiate who will stay uh, in the house, uh, who to negotiate to negotiate uh, who will pay for different things, who will uh, keep the insurance for the children, uh, who will uh, make sure that uh, the children get to school. All of various very important but uh, nonetheless small things, uh, as someone might say, that go on every day in our families. Those will all be laid out. Uh, in temporary order. So by the time of the end of the mediation, hopefully uh, there will be temporary uh, orders, uh, temporary agreements um, so that uh, everyone can continue to be able to go forward with their life, keep the children stable, keep their lives as stable as possible under the circumstances so that you can work towards a final settlement agreement. Thank you. Now, I know earlier in this webinar, we mentioned a 60 day period as far as the Texas divorce is concerned. Uh, can you guys give us a little information on what this 60 day period is and what all it entails? Sure, uh, Andrew. The, you know, as, as we said, this, this 60 day period is kind of a, a holding period that the, that the state has implemented um, to make sure that the parties basically want the divorce. However, just because you can't get a divorce finalized until that 60th, 61st day, it does not mean that your divorce is just sitting there stagnant and nothing's happening on it. That is, that's not true. Once the divorce is filed, you, can, you, you need to serve the divorce papers on your spouse. Your spouse then has a time period to file an answer. Um, along with that answer, discovery can take place. And that means you can get all of the information from your spouse. You can get all of the financial information. You can start working towards compiling a list of all of your assets. So even though there's a 60 day uh, holding period, the holding period for your divorce does not affect how that divorce moves forward. Um, so, even though the state says 60 days, you got to wait until you divorce, we don't allow that 60 day time frame to impact moving your case forward. And that brings me to our, our the next question. When you first meet with your attorney at Stephen Sullivan, what kind of information should the, the client bring to that meeting? What kind of documentation? Uh, what kind of data should they have with them? 
Sure, Andrew. Um, thanks for thanks for bringing that up because it's a very important issue uh, that everybody needs to be aware of. When you decide for uh, when when you decide to get a divorce, you have to understand that your divorce is not just a personal relationship that is being divided. Okay, it's a business relationship that's being divided as well. Two spouses having jobs or having purchased assets or having bank accounts or having vehicles, property, all of these things are owned by the marriage, basically. They're community property. If they're purchased during the marriage, basically they are. What a divorce is, is a division, is a legal division of all of those connections between the spouses. That means all of the financial connections, all of the ownership connections, all of the debt connections between the spouses have to be divided. As a result, when, when you decide to get a divorce, you have to show up and you have to be able to tell your lawyer all of those financial items. You have to be able to tell your lawyer all of the information about all of your accounts. You have to be able to tell your lawyer all of the information that you know about all of the assets that you own, whether it be cars or, you know, boats or RVs, any property, any hunting camps, uh, and of course, home or second home. You have to be able to come in with that documentation so your lawyer can understand the whole dynamics of, of your relationship with the spouses. The easiest way to do that is by, by drafting an inventory. And you can look on our YouTube uh, page for a more in-depth discussion of the inventory and why it's important. But basically an inventory is an identification of everything you own. So besides the bank accounts and big assets such as cars and house, houses or camps or things like that, you also have to identify jewelry. You have to identify furniture. Um, you have to identify tools or um, firearms and, um, you know, even down to the littlest things of figurines in your bedroom. So when you come to the lawyer and you're seeking a divorce, be sure to come with all of the knowledge of all of your finance accounts, as well as an inventory of your house and the assets that you own. That is correct. And, and in fact, it's very important because one of the things we do with you right off the bat, once you put together your inventory and uh, you list your assets and liabilities, the properties you own uh, and, that, and the like, is we, uh, we help you build a budget. And why is that budget important? Well, you'd be surprised the number of people that we have as clients that don't really know what they're going to need to live on. And they don't really know what they're entitled to. And so we want to work through those things with you very carefully so that you'll know uh, what you have and what what this is, what, will, what it will entail, uh, not only to get the divorce, but also to live after uh, the divorce is final. The other thing that we'll go over with you is we have a fairly extensive custody worksheet. And this custody worksheet is, is incredibly important for your children uh, because uh, it goes through in detail uh, exactly who keeps the children, how many hours a day you or your spouse are with the children or you're both with your children. It goes through things like um, who do your children uh, want to stay with uh, on any one given weekend. Uh, it goes through your parenting skills. It goes through who works and, and who keeps the children, how y'all uh, have that division of labor um, uh, during the evening times. And so what it does is it helps us and ultimately helps the court uh, to uh, be able to frame uh, temporary orders and then uh, finally uh, put in the divorce decree exactly uh, what's necessary for the children and who is best to be the managing conservator of the children and how the visitation should take place. 
Well, thank you for that information. Now we have about five minutes left in this webinar. Uh, we had a few questions that we that were asked. Uh, the first question we have is, my spouse controls our family's finances. She doesn't share that information with me. What do I need to do if I don't know this information? Uh, th thank you so much for uh, raising that question because it's a question that not only you have, um, it's a question that at, at least 75% of, of the spouses that we talk to have a question about the finances of the marriage. Sometimes it's very intentional that one spouse hides everything. Other times it's not. But every time that, that a client comes in, we go through a, this, a, a specific checklist to uh, attempt to determine where accounts may be. Then we can dig. We can dig into uh, the major, uh, the major banking uh, uh, corporations and organizations. We can also dig into the uh, major stock funds, Merrill Lynch's, Charles Schwab's, Ameritrade, things like that, and search for those assets. We can run the courthouse records for sale and purchase of other assets. So we can dig and we can find all of those assets that are being hidden. You can help us though. When you come to us, bring us everything you can, you can find, okay? Doesn't necessarily have to be an account number. If you believe that there's an account at Merrill Lynch, bring that information to us. If you know all of the places of employment that your spouse has worked at during your marriage, bring us that information. There could be specific accounts for those specific employers for retirement, pension, or otherwise. So bring any information you can, even if you don't know a full picture of that account. If you believe there is one, bring it with you. We can take it from there and find the rest. Okay, so the next question we have is, my spouse says that I will never see my kids again if I file for divorce. Is that true? Absolutely not. The only circumstance that uh, may uh, be true in is if uh, there's been uh, spousal abuse or uh, domestic violence. And if it's serious enough uh, and uh, that, that particular parent may not uh, uh, be able to see the children for some period of time. Uh, but as far as Texas is concerned, it obviously and has been for years, the best interest of the child is uh, what the courts look at. They want to make sure that the child uh, has the best uh, life they can, the best upbringing, the best parenting. And it's assumed in Texas that that is uh, by both parents, uh, both parents being uh, uh, the uh, uh, managing conservators of the children uh, such that they can uh, uh, contribute and uh, give the children uh, the most stable and the best environment between the two of them. Again, uh, that uh, changes radically if there's been domestic violence or child abuse. Thank you, Jed. Now, the final question we have is who stays in the house during the divorce process? Well, uh, that has to be worked out. There's no presumption as to who stays in the house. Uh, generally, the uh, individual who has or is going to have custody of the children in the first part of the divorce, that is in the first uh, two weeks or so, uh, would stay in the house. But again, that is a situation where uh, the parties have to work it out and agree. Uh, if you're in the house and your spouse is left, we can tell you that uh, you uh, are not in uh, a situation where you can keep that spouse out of the house, lock that spouse out of the house, or change locks. And Dennis will go into some of the other things uh, now that, that you can't do uh, once you file for divorce or, or once you're in a divorce situation, uh, even though you might be uh, in the uh, family homestead or house. Sure. Thanks, Chad. From a from from 
from a house situation, the the initial uh, the initial reaction uh, that we see from our clients is is usually uh, my spouse left. I'm going to lock the doors. I'm going to change the locks. Uh, my spouse isn't allowed back in. That's not the law. Um, you can't change the locks and prevent your spouse from coming into the house because the spouse owns that house as well as you do. So you can't keep the spouse locked out. But you can make an agreement with the spouse as to who lives in the house and who exits the house. You can ask the court for guidance in the form of temporary orders as to who stays in the house and who leaves the house. Sometimes people going through a divorce can live in the same house. Um, oftentimes that's not the case, but be assured and, and be careful because you cannot prevent your spouse from coming into the house unless you have an order that indicates your spouse cannot do so. So um, just the fact of your spouse leaving the house does not affect that spouse's rights to the property, does not affect that spouse's rights to a division of property. Just because your spouse left doesn't mean that spouse is going to get a lower percentage of the division of property. It could have some impacts on child custody, but it will not have any impact on the division of property. So if you're in a situation where you've left the house and you're locked out or your spouse has left the house and you want to lock them out, um, be careful. Um, you can't lock your spouse out unless the court says it's okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jad and Dins, for answering those questions for us. That's all the time that we have for today. I want to thank everybody for joining us on this webinar. Our, our next webinar is going to be September 9th, uh, 1 p.m. That's a Wednesday. It's going to cover child custody and child visitation and parental rights issues. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, please email Stephen Sullivan at pbarnes at ss-pc.com or call our office at 713 336-7200. Uh, we also have a YouTube page, uh, Step in Sullivan PC, that has additional videos and documents on uh, family law or divorce questions. And please feel free to visit that webpage to get more information. We look forward to seeing everybody again. Hope everybody has a great rest of the day.